Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. As you can see by the title of this video, today I will be talking to you about how I started my crochet business and the shipping products, the shipping process, the Instagram part, buying supplies. Yeah, everything about it. I made a little note section, so I'll have a good idea of what to talk about. And while I do that, I will also be painting something for my room. If you do not know me, my name is Brianna and I do crochet videos and I'm going to start doing college videos as well because I will be a freshman in the fall this year. Either my next video or my video after my next video will be college related, so stay tuned for those. And yeah, let's get right into the video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share this video to your friends or whoever you think may need this video. I'm finally done with the sketch. Don't mind the feet and the hands, I'm not the best at that but yeah this is what we have now and now i'm gonna start actually doing the video and i want to show y'all how i peel this stuff because it's so satisfying and it comes off so clean and it's less messy than just washing it off and see how clean that is so with instagram i started mine in like 2017 maybe 2018 or 2019 i just know it was before 2020 so i wasn't active before but during quarantine that's whenever i started posting a lot because of the boredom of not being in school anymore being stuck in the house so that's whenever i started being consistent and started growing more um i would say that you should use hashtags on all of your posts that are relevant to what you are posting so let's say I'm going to post a crochet summer top. I'm not going to put um, winter fashion as a hashtag because that's not what they're looking for. They're looking for winter stuff when I am posting summer stuff. So let's say I'm doing a summer top. I would do hashtag festival attire, hashtag festival fashion, hashtag boho, hashtag summer, hashtag summer fashion, stuff like that. Jump at any opportunity that you can for growth. I'm editing right now and while I'm in this video, I did get an email about a business opportunity, which of course I will be taking because like I said, that does help with growth and getting your name out there. So let's say somebody is promoting small businesses. I would make the investment to send like a YouTuber your stuff for free not not something too big but something that will represent your business well because that will also help you grow and maybe they'll even shop with you after that or collaborate with you after that well, of everything you said it's a 10 out of 10 for me it's the crochet for me hey if somebody wants to collaborate with you like a business and they want you to sh promote their stuff that can also be helpful money-wise and with getting more promotions. Connect with other people in the community because it is nice to have somebody who is interested in the same stuff as you. They will also most likely share your work because everybody in the crochet community that I know is very nice and they like to see other people who like their craft to grow as well. So I like to share other people's work when I get on my Instagram and people share my work as well, which really helped me grow too. Back whenever I started my business on Instagram, that is also when um, there was a lot of big influencers sharing other small businesses too. That's whenever things really blew up. So to me, it was kind of luck, but also I did get myself noticed to receive that luck, if that makes any sense. So I would also say to take good pictures, lighting is everything, quality is everything, because whenever people are scrolling on their Instagram feed, they'll most likely interact with something that's high quality, share something that's high quality, and not something that's like in the dark where you can barely see what the top is that I made. Hashtags, connect, jump at opportunities, and good pictures. Now I'm going to be talking about a website. So for me, I started my website a couple months after I started growing a lot on Instagram. I used Wix because I am familiar with the program, well, with the website builder. And it is pretty easy to use even if you're not familiar with it. So I would suggest using that. And when you do, you have to get Wix Premium if you do want to use your own domain. But if you don't care about your own domain and you want to, you don't mind having Wix in the title of your website, then you don't have to pay for that. But you do have more features when you do get Wix Premium. And with Wix Premium, I would suggest to pay it 
annually and not monthly. I did waste a lot of money in the beginning by paying for it monthly. And it is a huge weight off of your shoulders whenever you can just pay it for the year and you don't have to worry about any reoccurring payments every month because for me it was like around $30 a month so it was a lot better for me to pay it in full especially because I do get the student discount so another thing is if you are a student make sure you use the student discount because you will get it half off with Wix it also helped me with organization of my orders it helped me with shipping and everything because before I had a website I would just ship with USB I would do the click and snip or whatever it's called so I would pay for the shipping label at home print it out and then have it on my package already and just drop it in the box when I get to the post office but I would always have to get priority shipping but with my website I can choose priority shipping first class shipping express priority and all of that so I wouldn't have to pay like seven dollars to send off a bandana because now I could just use first class mail where I can pay like four dollars to ship that bandana. So that really helped me with the shipping process and it helped me stay more organized and have listings and just make my website a lot cuter than it would just be to DM me on Instagram and all of that. And it was also easy to easier to keep my DMs less crowded and cluttered with orders and just talking to people and other crochet artists and everything. So I think a website is a good idea to get. With shipping, as I mentioned before, I do it through my website, but you can always do it through UPS, USPS, FedEx, whichever you prefer. And I would suggest if you are shipping your labels before you go out and drop them off, I would say you need a printer. It would be great to have a scale so you'll know the weight of your packages for whenever you're buying the shipping labels because the weight does matter. Measuring tape would also be helpful because they do ask for the dimensions of the box as well for giving you a pricing of your shipping label. I also like to make my packaging a little personal so I like to include a note in my packages. I love getting notes whenever I order from small businesses so I would like to do the same in return for other people who order from me. So with pricing, personally I still do struggle with this. In the beginning, my priority was to make it affordable so anybody can have the opportunity to buy it. So I, I don't know, I just felt bad charging people a lot. But after a year of running my business, I did realize that I was undercharging myself, doing so much work, spending so much hours crocheting and making it cheaper because I wanted people to be able to buy it and not have to stress out about getting the money to buy these things. I know my worth and I know that I shouldn't be working for a minimum wage or below. So I have been raising my prices because I will have less time with going to college and everything. So I decided to raise those and I know that people will still buy it because they will know my worth as well. I deserve better than getting paid like $2 an hour because I felt bad for charging a lot for a whole cardigan that takes me three days to make. It's a good thing to know your worth, know your value and don't undercharge yourself even if you do feel like nobody will buy from you because if you feel that way then maybe they'll feel that way too because you're putting that out there you're putting that energy out there to make them feel how you're feeling if that makes any sense with supplies personally i got my stuff from hobby lobby because that is the only craft store that i have in my town but I would always go on the sale weeks because at Hobby Lobby, every other week, the yarn is 30% off. So I would always make sure to buy my yarn whenever it was 30% off. I buy all of my shipping things off of Amazon, like my scale, my packaging, and all of that. That's pretty much all that I have in my notes right now for starting a business. Telling you the things that I learned within the year of running my business and starting my business up. So if you have any more questions, just comment them down below. This is all that I could really think of right now. So I hope this is helpful. So all in all, it is really a learning experience and I have learned so much within this year of running my business and I know I will continue to learn a lot more. Just know that you can do it and even though it may be a little stressful at times, 
it is worth being able to work at your own time and being able to control how much you make and basically you're in charge of your own life completely and it is great to be able to use my hobby as a way for myself to make money it is worth it especially if you are pricing yourself well and you do know your worth because Nobody wants to work whenever they feel like they're getting underpaid. And whenever I did feel like I was getting underpaid, that's whenever I didn't really want to crochet as much for people. I would just want to make my own stuff. But now that I did raise my prices, I am back to enjoying it and knowing that I am working for something that is worth it. You can do it if you are interested in starting your own business and if you already do have a business. I hope I did teach you some things from my experience that you can take and apply to yourself and your business. So I finished my painting and this is how it turned out. I absolutely love it. Here's the picture that I was doing it based off of. It's me and my boyfriend from Sunday this week for his birthday. This is going to definitely get hung up in my room and this is by far maybe one of my best paintings but it's definitely getting hung up because I love it. I don't draw faces because I know I can't. Don't mind the feet and the hands though for everything else. Here we go. I hope that everything in this video was helpful. And like I said, comment down below if you have any questions that I didn't go over. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Bye guys.